With your CID TV News update, I'm Donna Bush. Thank you for joining us. Thursday evening, officials, including various ministers and a large number of residents from West Bay and other districts, attended the reopening of the track and football field at the Sir John A. Cumber Primary School. Described as a symbol of an investment and new and improved resources, the new track is already being used by many. <laughs> is now officially open. This dual investment is to ensure that the continuation of the investment in the physical infrastructure here at Sir Johnny Conger Primary School to benefit our children, our future, our inheritance, so to speak, is something that we as a government are so proud to be able to bring to fruition, as I said, here tonight. And certainly, um, those of you will know that during the last administration, we did do some enhancements, some significant enhancements of the actual physical property on the school itself. The year, I think the upper years had some enhanced classrooms, play, playgrounds. So this is really um, an important continuation of the work that we are dedicated to do. Over the years, this playing field has contributed to the physical and mental welfare of Caymanians in general, but in particular, the residents of the district <coughs> thoughtfully upgraded to provide additional facilities and thereby accommodate more users. It will benefit young and old alike. As you know, I'm an avid sports person. Myself and my government has given the Reverend support for this policy, not only to be in West Bay, because we are a coalition government after all, but it's our hope and our dream, our aspiration, our objective to take this throughout Grand Cayman and Cayman Rock and to annex it to our schools so we'll have better efficiency and we'll have better value for money. And I was so delighted as I sat there and I saw all um, ages already walking the track and at different speeds. So I'm hoping that once we complete this infrastructural exercise, that we can get back where uh, West Bay and Georgetown and Northside can compete. And we won't have to worry about having a cock shell at the four wheel stop, as Ms. Bush tells us sometime. We won't have to worry about being from this district and not being. I believe that. We can, through our director of sports, who happens to be from West Bay, Mr. Anglin, and we can put together programs where we can compete. And I also want to tie to it onto what um, Speaker Bush had intimated earlier in his um, remarks. Yes, we have taken the cricket cages from here, but they've just gone across the way to the Jim Powell Cricket um, Pavilion, and we're going to be um, washing it, repainting it, putting in cages. We're also going to be revitalizing softball in the district of West Bay. And we're working towards getting after school programs so that it would include all genders, not just the boys, but the girls alike. And we can get them involved in positive activities so that we can continue to work from a holistic perspective for that Caymanian kind. It's not just a, the tourism, but we take sports to the world and in a few weeks time we're bringing the world to sports in Cayman with Crypto. so let me just put in a plug now all those who have athletes and all those who have aspirations and all those who want excuses please leave them home because our athletes have been training assiduously and when we hear that Caymanian song sung I want to see that stadium filled with red, white, and blue with Caymanian pride. Supporting, supporting our athletes. During the evening, students of the primary school choir sang songs and everyone was able to enjoy the celebration with food and the chance to mingle. The site was first established back in 1939 and has been upgraded over the years with the latest improvements, making way for larger sporting events to be held at the primary school field. 
Well, speaking of schools, on Friday morning, hundreds of students from the John Gray High School met with employers from across Grand Cayman at their annual careers fair. This week was careers week at the school, with the fair ending the week. Throughout the week, students were able to learn all they could about what it takes to successfully land their dream job or pursue their chosen careers. They also learned how to be prepared for the workplace. Various government departments and other private sector companies uh, were showcasing at the John Gray uh, Career Fair with the goal of informing the students of what careers are available and what it takes to get their degrees. The career fairs are organized annually by the individual schools as well as the careers services unit. Finally, a bulletin from the Education Department announces a change in date for this year's inter-primary sports day. Officials say because of the royal visit scheduled to occur from March 27th to the 29th, the dates had to be changed because students will be required to be at the airport to greet the royal family on March 27th and March 28th being declared a public holiday. The 2019 inter-primary sports will now take place on Thursday, April the 4th when field events will occur and Friday the 5th of April when the track meet will take place. Now the Department of Education Services apologizes for any inconvenience caused. Uh, further inquiries about the inter-primary sports day uh, date change can be directed to the Education Department on 945-1199. That's 945-1199. And that ends today's news update here on CIG TV. If you missed it, you can go to the Cayman Islands Government Facebook page as well as the CIG Television YouTube channel. I'm Donna Bush, as always, thanking you for joining us, wishing you a wonderful and safe weekend, and hoping you'll join me back here again on Monday. Until then, bye-bye for now. Did you know that planning permission is required for a shed? Did you know you should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required? Did you know planning permission is required to clear land by mechanical means? You should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required. The Esterly Tibbetts Highway three-lane roundabout is ready for drivers. It's time to make sure you know how to use it. First, know which exit you need to take. Pay attention to lane arrows and signs. Make sure you use your signal to change lanes or exit the roundabout. To turn left, you always approach in the left-hand lane and indicate left. To drive straight ahead, you need to be looking out for signs and road markings indicating which lane to use. Get in one of the lanes marked with a straight through arrow. If turning right, you must use the right-hand lane and indicate accordingly. To use the roundabout safely, remember these three tips. Know your exit, pick your lane, and signal to make your turn. Did you know your mailing address details on your land register must be up to date in order to receive notices on new development which may impact you? Visit Lands and Survey Department to check your mailing address is correct. Did you know that walls, fences located along the road require planning permission no matter the height? You should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required. Did you know that fences and walls within the high water setback require planning permission no matter the height? You should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required. Did you know that a trellis structure requires planning permission? You should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required. Did you know that a deck more than six inches above finished grade requires planning permission? Did you know you should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required? <laughs>